the rate of felonies. So the first question that we kind of had is, does suicide die, what is its impact? And basically, they did, they've done research on suicide die by die. I mean, you're losing like five pounds a week, okay? So you are doing like, six, you know, four to five hours of cardio a day. You're eating 1,500 calories a day. Um, you're losing five pounds or more a week. That's suicide dieting. And <clears throat> what they found is like, so say someone's suicide dieting and they end up losing like 60 pounds. Suicide dieting, several, several years later, and they've gained back all the weight. Their metabolisms were still suppressed, like drastically, um, and they had to gain back all their lean mass, but they gained back all their fat mass. And so clearly you don't want a suicide diet. Now people will go, remember, people like to think extremes. So on one extreme at a suicide diet, on one extreme, if you look at original context diets, people would prep for like 12 weeks for a show. Not more than 16 weeks. Now though, there's a new trend and the trend is, you hear, I've been dieting for 30 weeks for a show, okay? So we have one extreme of suicide dieting. We have another extreme of um, very low, slow diets, okay? So when I say very slow, I'm talking about like a half a pound a week, right? For like 30 weeks. And the theory is that you will spare, um, you'll spare muscle mass and you'll lose more higher percentage of fat, okay? You guys have heard of this before, right? You see that this is a trend. Okay, so is that efficacious? Um, there was a study, so basically what ended up happening is this. Um, they did a study, now moderate dieting is where you're losing more than a pound a week with upwards of three pounds a week, probably two and a half. So you're probably losing about a pound and a half to maybe three pounds a week. So maybe one week you might lose three, next week you might lose two, next week you might lose one and a half. That's what we call moderate diet, okay? That's your 12 week prep. So what they do is they compared the two and looked at metabolism. And they found, say if you diet, for example, for like 24 weeks versus like 10, both, of, both groups metabolism decreased the same. So it wasn't better for metabolism. So dieting quick versus dieting very long, moderate is not better for your metabolism. Suicide dieting, whole different story. If you're losing two pounds a week, moderate dieting, that's fine. So now let's go to the next sort of phase, which is, but does it spare more muscle? There was a study by Garth out of a Norwegian Institute of Sport, and what they ended up doing was, they had a slow group, which again, maybe is like a half a pound, to a pound a week versus a faster, which is like one to two pounds a week. And so basically, so one group lost their body weight twice as fast as the other group. They found that when you did it twice as long, you, you lost a little bit, in, a little bit of less muscle and lost a little bit more fat. But you had to think of it from this perspective, okay? If you lose a little bit more and you diet for 10 weeks versus 20 weeks, that's a lot, that 10 weeks time, what could you have done with it as far as building muscle? You could have spent way more time building muscle, which was far exceeded and overcome the 10 weeks you spent dieting to spare the half a pound of muscle that you would have, that you lost less for that extra 10 weeks of dieting. Think efficiency, don't just compare endpoints. Now what they did, people and they followed them for several weeks after they dieted. And what did they find? They found that people who dieted twice as long gained back the fat twice as fast, okay? So the problem is you're not sparing that much muscle, you're not losing that much more fat, but you gain back the fat twice as fast, okay? So that's, a, that's not a good thing. It's no bueno, it's not efficient, and you gain back the fat twice as fast, that could be a problem. Is the last trend that we have is what's called like long, slow, reverse diets. And what you'll see is a lot of bodybuilders they'll come out of they'll come out of their diet and, and they'll maintain super low body fat for like eight weeks. 
Now, often times after that, they explode right up to where they were. But the point is like, oh, I'm doing this long, slow reverse diving. Should I stay lean really long after? The answer is, when you get to a low body fat percentage, you've got to have, maintain a certain cardio regimen, a certain calorie deficit regimen to maintain that. Even if you're here, if you're still in that low calorie, below your basal metabolic rate deficit, and you're maintaining body fat, studies show, even if you're not lowering your calories anymore, you, until you get back up to your basal metabolic rate, your metabolism will actually keep going down and down and down. So you don't want to stay long, lean, like that shape, or try and see how close you stay to contest shape for several weeks after your contest. The key is you get right back up to your metabolism. Now, does that mean you're back up to your calories pre-cutting? Uh, no. What it means is this. Say your original calories before cutting, you could eat 3,000 calories a day and not lose fat. Say contest time, by the time you were at your contest, you're 1,800 calories. You don't want to go 1,850, 1,900, 1,950. Because it's probably around 2,500, 2,600 you can maintain. If you stay below that, your metabolism will keep dropping during that reverse diet. So of course, yeah, you look leaner, but, by the time, but your metabolism keeps lower and lower and lower. So once you get up back up to those normal calories, you start gaining fat like crazy. So the point is, go back up to your new maintenance calories, which is probably 2,500, 2,600 calories, within a week. Yeah, you're gonna gain some fat. Am I change post contest? No, I'm saying get back up to your normal maintenance calories. So take home message. You're good now. Okay. The take home message, suicide dieting is like five pounds a week, you know, 50 pounds in two months or whatever. That's gonna cause your metabolism to be slow for uh, years. The adaptations that occur, your metabolism is gonna slow down for years on that. But, but if, what's, um, I was gonna say, hit on yeah. the, um, the biggest loser study. That, yeah, that's a big okay. right there. So you guys are interested in this, you want to look up like the biggest loser and see that study that actually happened. Next thing is moderate versus slow. Slow is like 30 week diet, half a pound a week versus, you know, one to an upwards of two and a half, three pounds a week. What studies show is that the half a pound a week does not spare your metabolism any more than diet, losing two pounds a week. So you may as well lose the two pounds a week. Next, the amount mass you save by doing a 30 week diet is not worth it at all. Because think about how much more time you could have been spending uh, gaining muscle. The final lesson is long, slow, reverse diets only impair your metabolism and will likely make you rebound even more once you're out of the reverse diet. So we don't recommend that. We recommend rapidly getting back up to maintenance calories. Not binging, but rapidly getting back up to maintenance calories. So guys, that's kind of the end of this lecture. Uh, Andy Barney here is be some questions to you. And yeah, let's do this. So I'm gonna start with Facebook, um, kind of going back to the beginning. Um, okay, this is a uh, met met metabol RMR question, sorry. Yeah. Is there a difference in RMR between two people, same age, gender, height, and weight? Is there a difference in RMR between two people, same gender, uh, age, height and weight yeah you rarely find two people exactly the same you know of course like i get 30 people but yes yes there's lots of differences your question might be why is that the case well there's the you know even if you have the same amount of muscle certain people have more uh thermically active tissue like brown adipose tissue we know from research that gut bacteria in large part determine whether some person one person is obese or not so if you take someone who's obese and take their gut bacteria and put it in someone who's lean, they'll become fat, and, and oftentimes vice versa. So the reason the answer is not just by your body composition. Um, you know, we had a guy, Cameron, in our lab, for example. Cam can eat 1,500 calories a day, and he's twice my size. And he's eating chest is like this big, enormous, squats a ton of weight, and He's not really hungry much, but he can grow on 1,500 calories. Day. He's probably got 50 more pounds. You know, so it, it's there's a lot more than just weight and height and gender. All right, jump up. Any age? Any questions on Periscope? We got a fish in. Okay, no 
questions on Periscope. Um, all right. Is it necessary on a ketogenic diet to have a carb day every two or three weeks to stay metabolically flexible, or is it necessary to be, or is it necessary to be metabolically flexible on a ketogenic diet? So, uh, cyclic keto question. It is a great question. Metabolic flexibility is the ability to utilize carbohydrates and fats. Okay, it's a good question. When people, you don't need to do cyclic ketogenic dieting to have carbohydrate stores. Once you adapt to keto, you're fine. The other thing is at high intensities, you can utilize high carbohydrates. However, in other words, if I train and I do some high intensity, I can use carbs. However, from a dietary standpoint, strict ketogenic diet doesn't make you somewhat inflexible. What I mean by that is basically like if, all, if I'm keto, which I am right now, and you give me 100 grams of carbs, I can't use them very well right now. So the, the question is, can I, say, can, I, can I maintain that adaptation by adding carbs? One possible way to do that would be possibly like targeted keto, where you might have like 20 grams of carbs, you know, or before your workouts. So our lab needs a lot more research on that, to be honest with you, but that might be one possible way. Uh, otherwise, realize that when you're keto, when you come out of a ketogenic diet, you need to slowly reintroduce carbs if you do decide to, go, to come out of a keto diet. Okay, well that's, that's, that's fine. Um, you guys have any other questions? Keto, keto and doctor told me I have high cholesterol. Keto and cholesterol, so what we generally see with cholesterol is if, you're, if you have high cholesterol, typically total cholesterol will lower in a ketogenic diet, especially if your body weight lowers. Um, but if you are lean, in our studies we just found typically increase, but total change, but the ratio of like good to bad cholesterol um, did change.